not be have your pizza eating disturbed by my talking. So I'll try to finish quickly and let you talk and chit chat. I know this is a nice chance for everybody to get back together and talk about things. Um, congratulations on almost finishing. Uh, I know the match, match day is coming. That will be a wonderful day. My match day, when I was in med school, I went to University of Rochester. We went to our mailboxes and got our slips, and that was it. <laughs> there was no elaborate ceremony. So you're, you're lucky that the things have advanced, but I'm sure you're all going to do great, as Penn students have always done, and you'll be happy wherever you go, which is the other secret that you'll find out. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit for the next few minutes about the graduation questionnaire. And the purpose of this little talk is to just to set up your interaction with it and give you some idea of how it's used. So we just finished our LCME uh, review, as many of you uh, know. Uh, some of you participated in it. Um, and uh, even some of you even led it. <laughs> and uh, that was a very, very successful um, uh, effort. We were viewed very, very favorably. There were something like 190 something standards that we were supposed to meet, and we met all but two. And one of them that we didn't meet was the library, which everybody said the library. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's just sort of like a residue of people expecting the library to be the place you study. And in fact, now we have a wonderful facility here that you can do some studying. The other one was one that sort of leads into this discussion today. It was a question, have you been discriminated against? And a bunch of people wrote in that they had been discriminated against. Um, now, as it turns out, the way they asked us to, to, um, to uh, frame this and to present the information kind of gave a, a distorted view of how frequently this happened. Uh, and the other thing that gave a very distorted view was the interpretation of what the word discrimination means. Now, I could insult everybody in this room right now. I could just go one after another. <laughs> and I would have insulted all of you, but I would not have discriminated. <laughs> discrimination is not insulting. Discrimination is actually doing something horrible that prevents you from getting something that's rightfully yours treating you in a way that prevents you from having something happen. Now, people say a lot of stupid things that you've encountered in the wards and maybe even in lectures, things that people shouldn't have said, people, things that were uncivil, things that made you uncomfortable. None of those things should happen, but they really aren't discrimination. So we have to go through a, a discussion with them about exactly what people meant. It was much more about uncivil and thoughtless and stupid and ridiculous and uh, ignorant sort of statements. It sounded like a presidential campaign <laughs> more than anything else. So, um, so words are very important and, and we'll respond and we'll show the, the LCME the data that we have and make the point that this represented uncivil behavior rather than true discrimination, preventing people. Maybe there were episodes of discrimination there, but not nearly the frequency that was implied by this. So this graduation questionnaire that you're going to get that you're going to go through is going to be the source of information that's going to be important for us in future uh, reviews by the accrediting body. They're going to look at the graduation questionnaires. They looked at the one that preceded you all to say, what are you doing about this problem? So we need to know what the problems really are, and we need to know um, we need to have you think carefully about the things you've experienced so that we get the right information back to us. We want honesty above all else. We want you to tell us exactly what you think, but we want you to think hard about exactly what's being asked. Now, part of the problem is the graduation questionnaire goes to every school in the country. And most schools in the country are not organized exactly the way this one is. Most schools in the country have, for example, two years of, of basic science, preclinical information, and then two years of clinical. They have a course in pharmacology. You don't have a course in pharmacology. It's, it's integrated into uh, multiple courses. Dr. Amamar, you may remember, gave you some lectures on pharmacology. It was in MDTI. It was here and there. And so if, if you write down, well, we didn't get any pharmacology at all, you may feel that way, thinking back on it. On the other hand, you may feel 
I really don't think Penn should have a separate course in pharmacology, which might be one of the results if everybody says we don't have any pharmacology. The same with physiology. We don't have a course in physiology. There's a question on the graduation questionnaire about what did you think of your course in physiology, because many schools do have it. We don't have a course in physiology. We have it integrated into Mod 1 and, of course, into throughout Mod Mod two. So that's the first thing, is for you to really pay attention to the questions and think hard about whether you think your school, this is now your school, you're going to be known as graduates of Penn, and how well Penn does in the future is going to influence what, what it means to have been a graduate of Penn. So it's really important for us to make sure that uh, things go well and that we do the right things by our students in the future. Yeah, question. Yeah, I mean, if you think, gee, you know, we had a lot of pharmacology integrated, but I, didn't, I think they really need to teach us pharmacology better, put that down. That's fine. It's just from the point of view, we're, we're, we're interested in, in your perceptions. I just want your, your perceptions need to be, what you need to factor in is the fact that this is a generic questionnaire and that all these schools have. And then and in other things, in the past, um, we've been uh, marked low on the graduation questionnaire for uh, information about healthcare policy. Well, you know, we have this course in healthcare policy. Some of you may have taken one that was not terribly satisfying. It's been revised in the past year or so. Um, it's now run by the uh, Leonard Davis Institute folks. It's still not the student's most favored course because some of you are really interested in health policy and others aren't. Again, if you think we should have more health policy, you should indicate it. In past years, people have said there's not enough health policy. Okay. But just understand that we probably have more health policy than most schools do. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr., uh, one of the leaders, Dr. Patel, has actually done a study of this and said, in fact, that we have more than most schools. But again, we want you to just think hard about this generic questionnaire and put in your responses that are appropriate. The final thing that comes up, and this is the one thing that we worry about very much, is this idea of mistreatment. Now, mistreatment definitely goes on, and it goes on in all sorts of modes. It often goes on between classmates, which we've heard. It goes on between residents and students, and it goes on between faculty and residents, and sometimes faculty and students. We'd love it to be zero. It's never going to be zero, but on the other hand, um, we need to have a really thoughtful sense of it, because if we're seen as having a tremendous problem in this area, well, then we got to rip up what we do now and change things. And if we do have a tremendous problem in this area, that's what we should do. On the other hand, if, um, if we don't, then we need to just make sure that our current systems work well. So when you talk about, when they talk about mistreatment, when they talk about that, understand that we have policies here that we've illustrated to you on several occasions. The safe learning environment policy is a mistreatment policy. It's another name for it. We expect that when people are mistreated that we find out about it. Our current policy, by the way, which we've changed in the last few years, is that anybody who feels that something has happened that makes them uncomfortable, particularly in the clinical arena, they go to Barb Wagner instead of going to course directors or faculty on the course because a lot of people are concerned that if they complain about something, it's going to influence their grade. So we've tried to take it away from the, the course directors, and part of that that change has been a result of the information we've gotten from these graduation questionnaires. So getting this information is really uh, incredibly important and helpful to us. Um, and I guess um, the only other thing I would like to point out is that sometimes they use language that's stilted and doesn't really you know, quite square with what we do. For example, there's this notion that there ought to be structured community activities. And it turns out that your LEAP program, which you may remember way back when in the first year, was like, represents a structured community activity. Um, so we do do the, these things. Now, again, if you think we should do more, fine. You should point it out and, and comment upon, uh, about it. But understand that those programs, the opportunity to work in the various clinics that are available in West Philadelphia, represents an effort on the school's part to give you opportunities to interact with the community, but if you feel like there isn't enough, fine. We need to know that. We want to know reality. We just want to make sure, again, that you interact with this generic questionnaire in an appropriate way. 
So that's all I wanted to say. I wanted you, it's, it's a long questionnaire. It's, I mean, how many questions? It's, it, it takes a... Somebody did it already. Yeah, it's very long and painful, isn't it? Yeah. But again, paying attention to it is enormously useful. It's enormously useful because it gives us this true picture of the school, and it's enormously useful because your, your strong efforts in it are going to be the basis for the next review that we're going to have in several years. Fortunately, we're not going to have another review in eight, for eight years, but we want to know this information to improve things for the classes that are coming down the pike if improvements need to be made. Any questions about this? Any comments, Paul, that you'd like to make about it? Oh, I, I know that the last year's class, 99% said they knew Ben had a mistreatment policy compared to the national average, which was like 80% of students. Yeah, that's a, uh, thank you for pointing it out. The way the data are presented is we get our results here, and then we get compared to the national norms. So if we're, you know, if we have 80% of our students say they know that there's a policy in the national norm, the average of all the schools in the country of graduating students is 90%, we have a problem. So that's really what it's compared to. None of these are going to be zero, nothing's going to be 100%, but the question is, are we at least in important areas like mistreatment not an outlier. We don't want to be outliers. And obviously, in many areas, we're way ahead. It turns out when they ask the question, are you satisfied with your medical school education, we do better than the national averages. We're very proud of that. So we want to hear the good things, we want to hear the bad things. And uh, we want you to just take it very seriously and carefully because it will influence how students in future years are treated here and the opportunities that they have here. I think also there's an area for free text. So use that for customizing your response. Uh, sure. Those are looked at. Uh, I know Dr. Bill Farb and Dr. Morrison look at every comment that they get from the GQ to send it all to us anonymously. Yeah, so take it seriously. That's really the message we have here. It really, really is important that you do it in a really thoughtful way. And at this point in your careers, I mean, another questionnaire seems to be a real pain in the ass. I understand, but it really does matter that you take it very seriously, and we hope you will. Robert, anything you want to say, having led the LCME? All right, good. So let me just say that the one o'clock lecture that we had, which was the second So the, you'll now have a chance to have your pizza without being interrupted by any of us blabbing, so enjoy that as well. And it should be here if it's not already out back. Thank you.